Hello and welcome to episode 66 of Namaste Yoga. A few items of business before we get started today. You might see a few times in the background shots um, some birthday balloons and streamers. It's my daughter's birthday tomorrow, so we're all set up here for that, you know, multiple parties. And, and then it's actually my birthday coming up too, so I don't know, maybe the birthday balloons and streamers will stay on the set for a while. Um, I have something really exciting that I want to share with you. We're going to be running a pilot program where I can do private yoga sessions with you via Skype over the internet. So for that, what you need is a video cam and a free Skype account. And then we would do the private Pilates class, private yoga class, or Pilates, I teach Pilates too, um, via webcam. And so that I would design a program specifically for you and um, and we would do it together and you would be able to see me and I would be able to see you and give you feedback on your postures and things like that. So I'm really excited about it, but we've, nobody's really doing anything like this and nobody's done anything like this before. So we're looking for two or three volunteers who have a video webcam and a free Skype account with video that would be willing to try it out for us and who would like to receive a private yoga class with me. If you're interested, uh, you can email me at info, I-N-F-O, at melissawest.com. That's M-E-L-I-S-S-A-W-E-S-T.com. So as I say, I'll be taking two or three volunteers. I'll be doing the first two or three classes, uh, privates, for free, just while we get the kinks worked out and see if this is even something that's going to work well. So if you're interested, do email me and I will pick two or three lucky volunteers to receive a private class and private instruction from, from me. Okay, which brings us to today's class. We're working, um, we're on episode 66. We're working through the chakras and their archetypes. We've already done the root chakra and mother earth archetype. We did the second chakra and the goddess archetype. We worked with Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance. And this week we're working with the third chakra, the solar plexus here just above your navel. In this chakra, we're working with the warrior archetype. So we're gonna access our inner power, our inner strength in this class, and really feel it in our bodies, the sense of poise we're going to work with, and, and access our spiritual warrior. So why don't you go ahead and rest back, lie back on your back in Shavasana, and we'll get started. The solar plexus that part of your body just above your navel has to do with your self-worth and your own personal power. It's through this energy center that you become self-respecting, decisive, and um, connected to your values so that you really honor who you are. It is the archetype of the spiritual warrior. It's the peaceful warrior who is being an activist in the world. So I like to think about Andrew Harvey's work and his book, The Hope, where he talks about how our spiritual practices need to extend out into the world and make a difference in the world. So when we are connected to this arch archetype and to this chakra, we live from an empowered position. We have strength and an ability to assert our right and our beliefs and to be the best person we know how to be. And when we're really balanced in this archetype, we do what brings us joy and we fully express our talents and gifts. We learn to say no when necessary. We stand up for ourselves and others and we have this real sense of internal strength. And so I wanted to read a little excerpt for you from Sri Chimnoy's book, The Jewels of Happiness. So you might want to just zoom in on this book so they can see this book. Sri Chimnoy is a spiritual teacher and a meditation teacher. He died in 2007, but he wrote some of the most beautiful poetry and prose that I've read. I'll often sit with some of his readings um, before I do my meditation practice in the mornings. You can find his poems on the internet at uh, poetseekers.org, I believe. So I highly recommend that. And today, we're, I'm going to read you an excerpt called The Source of Power. 
Sri Chimnoy says, the real power lies in inmost silence. If you want to know how you can remain peaceful while doing something powerful, then I wish to say that you have to understand the meaning of the word powerful. Power means the poise of one's inner being, one's soul. If you have a free access to your inner being, to your soul, then automatically your outer action will be peaceful. You do not have to raise your hands and show off your outer capacity. Here there is no dramatic performance. If you are acquainted with what you inwardly have and inwardly are, if you have free access to your inner being, then automatically you taste the bliss of silence. And if you taste the bliss of silence in your outer action, you will all the time be peaceful. Powerful action is the result of inner poise. And I love this phrase, poise and inner poise. And this is what we're going to be working to cultivate in a kinesthetic and embodied way in our class today so that we can experience this on all other layers of our being in our lives. This powerful action is not a dynamic force or something that is seen in the movement itself. No, it is only in the silent equanimity, in the very heart of silence, that you get this power. <coughs> Excuse me. If you feel this power and enter into it, then everything around you is peaceful. Poise is an unseen power, and this unseen power is always ready to come to the aid of the outer action. And so today we will work with this idea of poise and connecting to that sense of internal lift to give us that inner strength in a kinesthetic and embodied way so that we can carry this with us emotionally, mentally, out into our world. So go ahead and wiggle and stretch out, but do stay lying on your back. We're going to start by connecting to our core strength. And I'm really happy to say that one of the things that we ordered because of all your donations this week was a new yoga mat. It's the only thing that actually arrived. <laughs> we ordered a new headset and some new lighting for this show as well. But I'm really happy to be on my new jade yoga mat and um, really excited to be with it. It's a really grippy and non-slip mat, so very excited about that. So thank you very much. All right, so you're going to start with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor and inhale, take your arms overhead. And while you do that, just breathe in and breathe out. And I want you to think about dropping your rib cage here. So dropping and sinking through your rib cage and then breathe in and breathe out and draw your navel down towards your spine and breathe in and breathe out and lift up through your pelvic floor. So your pelvic floor, for women, there's a sling of muscles, a figure eight of muscles that run around your vagina and anus. So you're gonna think about drawing these up and inside you, pulling more from the front, from the pubic bone than from the back. The other way that both sexes can think about this is drawing your pubic bone and your tailbone closer together. And then for the for the men in, that are taking the class, the way I've heard it described for men is it's like lifting up the boys. So if you do that, this is like a pelvic floor lift. <laughs> okay, my cameraman just gave me a wide-eyed look, so he should try it. Okay, let's inhale, take your arms overhead, and then you're gonna exhale and take your hands behind your head. And draw your elbows in, breathe in. Breathe out. I want you to keep hollowed out through your belly and exhale. Curl up by drawing the fronts of your ribs towards the backs of your ribs and bringing your shoulders off the ground. And you're going to stay here and breathe. Breathe in and breathe out. Draw your belly down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Draw your navel down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Draw your navel down. One more breath in and breathe out. Draw your navel down. Inhale and roll down through your spine. 
So core strengthening work and abdominal work is a part of yoga. I have to admit it's not one that I often engage in, but it's fun after working with my classes with it this week that I'm really going to put more emphasis on and make sure we have some sense of internal strengthening exercise happening in our classes. I think it's really important to be able to support us in our lives. So you're going to draw your knees into your chest now. And then take your arms out into a soft T and roll your knees to your left. And when you do that, I want you to bring your pelvis perpendicular to the ground. So you don't want it leaning back like this. So the way to do that is to stack your knees and then look over your right shoulder. So if you're like me and you're tight in your shoulders and your chest, what you can do is stack up a pillow or some blankets underneath you. The other thing you can do here is really spin your chest and heart around to the front and just notice how that drops your shoulder a lot more towards the ground. So we're going to access our core muscles today in two ways. One is by doing abdominal strengthening exercises and the other is through abdominal twists like the one that we're doing right now. When you do twists it helps to you know promote the internal fire. So the solar plexus is related to the element fire and so it's like stoking the flames when we do these twists. And then inhale, bring your knees back center. Okay, and exhale, slowly lower them over to the other side. Okay, so again, stack up your knees and your hips. And then roll open here. And then come on back center. Bring your knees into your chest. And then lengthen your legs out onto the ground so that your legs are straight, your heels are in the center of the ground. We're gonna do another abdominal exercise. So inhale, take your arms overhead. Exhale, bend your elbows, take your hands behind your head, draw the elbows in, tuck your chin, breathe in. I want you to think about lifting all the way up from your pelvic floor as though there's a line that's going to curl you up like a candy cane here. Okay, shoulders come off the ground, front ribs close towards the back ribs, and then you're going to breathe in. And breathe out, draw your navel down. Breathe in. Breathe out, draw your navel down, breathe in, and breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, draw your navel down, one more, breathe in, breathe out, navel draws down, good, and then inhale, roll down through your spine, and Draw your knees into your chest again. Great. So we're going to come into that recline twist again. This time we're going to come in a little different way. Just same exercise, accessing it a different way. So arms at shoulder height, soft T. You're going to place your feet flat on the floor and then pick up your pelvis, lift it off the ground, and move it over towards the right. Tuck the left side of your pelvis under, draw your knees up so you're in the twist. And then spin your chest around to the ceiling. Okay. 
and get a sense of accessing that place right in the center of your body, right in your core. And then come on back center, knees are bent. You'll have to untuck this. And then we'll do that on the other side. So you'll pick up your hips, move them over to your left, tuck your right hip under, bring your knees towards your right, and look over your left shoulder. And bring your legs back center. Okay, draw your knees to your chest. Just excuse me while you're doing that. I'm going to have some more water. I didn't drink enough water before I came on today. But it could be also by stoking the fires of my third chakra that I'm getting really dry too. Also, I have to say here it's... Uh, it was minus 25 last night. It's minus 20 now Celsius and um, it's really cold. <laughs> we actually had the pipes freeze in our house last night. So we had the propane torch going this morning to, to thaw out the pipes. So it's, if it's over minus 20 in your neck of the woods, then you're a lot warmer than we are here today. So it's very dry because the heat's on a lot right now. All right, so your, arm, your legs are at a 90 degree angle. And so I've just done everything I possibly could to reinforce the stereotype that Canada is a very cold country all the time. <laughs> it's January, it's very cold in January here. <laughs> okay, so your arms, you could keep them out to the side in a soft tee for some extra stability. And then lift up through your pelvic floor so you have that sense of internal strength or poise, as Sri Chimnoy says. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly arc your leg down to the ground. So notice how the angle of my leg stays the same. It's almost like it's just on a pulley system here. And then you'll breathe out and arc the other leg down. So this is a great option if you have any low back issues. You're gonna stay with this bent knee arc. Exhale to lower. And it's yoga because we're breathing while we do it. Breathe in to lift. Breathe out and slowly lower and breathe in and lift. So let me present you with another option if you'd like it to be more challenging. If you had any low back issues, then you're gonna stay with the bent knees. Otherwise, you can join me here. Exhale, straight leg arc to the ground. And inhale and draw that straight leg up. Slow and steady, moving with breath. Exhale, slowly arcing down. And inhale, arcing up. Exhale, slowly arc down. Inhale, arcing up. You can probably see all that shaking as all of those stabilizers are firing out to support my core. Inhale and up. Let's do two more each side. And inhale, lift. Exhale. Inhale, lift. And one more each side. And last one. Inhale and lift. Great, and then hug your knees into your chest. Maybe rock yourself from side to side. Okay. 
All right, and then bend your knees and you can either rock yourself up by taking a hand behind your knee or you can roll to your side and come on up. And when you come up, we're going to do some cat pose. So you can take your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Elbow creases face each other and then breathe out and round up through your back and breathe in an arch in the other direction. And as you breathe out, really draw up from your navel and your solar plexus area. And breathe in and open and feel the stretch out as well. And then I want you to come to a neutral back. So in a neutral back, there is um, a small curve in your low back, but you don't want to dump through your low back. So you want your core to be supported. And tuck your toes and you're going to breathe in. Breathe out, you're going to just hover your knees barely off the ground. Okay, so you're reaching back through your heels. You're lifting up through your pelvic floor and we'll breathe here. Breathe in, breathe out, drop through your navel. And if wrists are an issue at all, you can always come onto your fists. Breathe in. Breathe out. Draw your navel up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Draw your navel back towards your spine. Breathe in. And breathe out. Very good. Lower your knees and sit back onto your heels. Okay, inhale up onto all fours and walk your left leg through so you're in a lunge pose. You're going to sink down heavy through your front left foot to come upright. And I'm going to give you two options here. The first is to take your right hand to the outside of your left knee so you're twisting like this. This is great. And then the second option is to take your right elbow to the outside of your left knee, bring your palms together and by increasing the twist, you may be able to bring your hands towards your heart. So here we access our core through twists, creating heat in the body. And then inhale and come back center. Switch your legs. So you're walking your right leg through into the lunge. And then sink down through your front right foot to come upright into the lunge. And so again, the two options. One is to take the left hand to the outside of the right knee and twist in a more upright position. And the second option is to take your left elbow to the outside of your right knee and bring your palms together.
and then inhale back center and how about just stepping into downward facing dog so you can do something symmetrical with your spine hands underneath your shoulders tuck your toes under lift your hips up towards the ceiling and then open your heels towards the ground oh this is where i was really looking forward to this mat there's just absolutely no slip here in this mat Okay, and then slowly lower yourself down and bring your legs around in front of you. So let's work with Dandasana here uh, as a way of preparing for the modified boat poses that we're going to do in a second. So sit with your legs out in front of you. Now, when you sit, I want you to lift and move the flesh back another way so you can really connect your sit bones to the ground and lengthen your spine straight up and down. So hopefully I'm doing this with a nice straight back here. Okay, what can tend to happen here is that, what's very common, especially if the hamstrings are tight, is that it pulls the sit bones under and people are sitting more like this with a rounded spine. And then your core is not really working at all here. And it's not a very good position for the spine to be straight up and down, because it's not. So lift and peel the flesh out of the way. Lengthen your spine straight up and down. Okay, and this is the position, this really straight back that we're going to work with for these modified boats. Okay, so bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. And take your hands straight out in front of you. Now breathe in, straight spine. Tendency here is going to be to do that rounding. If that rounding happens, you will not access your core at all. So a lot of internal work has to happen for you to access your core, your power, your inner strength. Lift up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back, breathe in, breathe out. You're gonna hinge back through your hips and pause here. So shaking is normal here. Breathe in, breathe out. Drop through your pelvic floor, hollow your belly back. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. One more breath in and breathe out. Good, and then hinge forward, open your knees and sit forward. Great. Okay, so we're going to do two more versions of that. You can stay with your arms in front through all of these. That's totally fine. Do what feels best for your body. Sometimes people's low back will feel a little sore in these poses. That's pretty normal. Probably some weakness in, in your low back. So unless it's sharpshooting pain, these exercises are okay. This is also an exercise where you need to be cautious of slip discs. It's not a good exercise if you have any slip discs. So stay away from it if that's the case for you. Um, so lift up nice and tall, but I did have a student this week with bulging discs, and anything that strengthens the core is really good for bulging discs. It's just the slip discs, not so good. Okay, so you can inhale here. Exhale, hinge back, stay nice and tall, straight spine, lift up through your pelvic floor, and then inhale, take your arms out to the side. So a little more challenging this time. Good, then arc your arms forward, lower them down. And this time, let's just sway your knees from side to side. Okay, now come back center. I'm wondering if we can give them a shot of the snow outside today, maybe when we stand up. <laughs> okay, so inhale, let's come back here. Exhale, hinge back from your hips. We're having like a typical of what you would expect to have in the winter here. Okay, lift up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back, arc your arms overhead now and reach them up. So resist that urge to hollow out. Reach out, let's um, reach, lengthen up, breathe in and breathe out. 
Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe the belly back. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good. And then arc your arms down and open your knees up. Shake your legs out, stretch out in whatever way you need to. Okay, and then come to a comfortable seated position for you. So for you, that might be sitting on a chair or sitting with your pelvis elevated a bit by putting a pillow under your pelvis or maybe even sitting on a block. Maybe even sitting kneeling would be better for you than sitting cross-legged or legs out straight. Whatever works best for you. We're going to work with a breath, and this is my preferred way of working my abdominals. I love, I love breath practice. I love pranayam. And this is one that really strengthens your abdominals. It's known as Kapalabhati breath. It's also called breath of fire and skull shining breath. So it's very cleansing and clarifying. And it's one of those breaths that takes a little bit of time to get used to. It's maybe a little strange at the beginning, but... Um, well worth it. So the way that it works is you, let's do it by placing your hands on your belly. If you already know how to do it, just go ahead. You place your hands on your belly, you're going to breathe in. You're going to breathe out with a sharp exhale through your nose and draw your navel back. So everything's tightened out. Now you're going to relax your belly and let the inhale come in passively. So breathe out strongly through your nose, draw your belly back. Relax. Let the breath come in. And we'll speed that up. So full inhale and full exhale. Okay, so it's an active exhalation through your nose, drawing your belly back, then relax everything. Inhale comes in like a vacuum passively through your nose. Strong, strong exhale through your nose. So this is kind of a fake it till you make it breath. So just do it, do your best and you'll, you'll get there. The main action is that the navel's drawing back. Okay, let me tell you how we're gonna finish our next round of Kapalabhati. We're gonna do about 40 breaths. And then when we're done, we're going to inhale completely, exhale completely, and then we'll inhale part way and hold the breath. Okay? This breath is a great energizing breath. If you have high blood pressure, you want to be cautious with it, that it's not raising your blood pressure too much because it is a, a breath that raises your blood pressure. When we do that breathing at the end, it helps to equalize it. So just be cautious with that depending on your own health conditions. Okay, so here we go. Full inhale, then Kapalabhati breath. Keep going. If you're having trouble with it, go more slowly. Full inhale, full exhale, breathe in part way and hold. And even here you can lift up through your pelvic floor, draw that energy up your spine and then exhale when the need is great. Good. Okay, let's do another round of Kapalabhati. This time we'll do it a little bit more quickly. So full inhale. Here we go. So keep going and experiment with going more strongly using a stronger exhale and then experiment with going more softly. Okay, so 
play with that, the strength of it. Strongly like that. Or maybe more softly. Keep going. You can experiment with speeding it up. Or slowing it down. So play around with the speed. Full inhale, full exhale. Breathe in part way. Suspend your breath, draw up through your pelvic floor. And exhale when the need is great. So I was just thinking because I was working with some prenatal clients yesterday, this isn't probably a breath that I would do with prenatal clients. It's not to say that if you didn't do it before you were pregnant that you couldn't do it. Definitely the holding the breath part would be contraindicative to pregnant women. Um, so always want to keep, keep the um, breath going to the baby so you wouldn't want to ever cut off the flow of oxygen to the baby. Okay, from here we're going to come up to a standing position. Stand towards the front of your mat. We're going to do the warrior poses because we're working with the third chakra and the warrior archetype. So I love the warrior poses and what they stand for symbolically. You're going to take a big step back with your right foot, a nice generous step and your right toes are on an angle. And then turn your hips towards the front of your mat. Now, if this really torques your back knee, then you can always come up onto the ball of your foot here. That would be totally fine. And then from here, sink down through your front left sit bone so that your front left knee is bent and bring your arms up. There's warrior one. So the warriors are the spiritual warriors. And here, Spiritual warriors face their problems head on. They assess the situation and they take a stance. They stand up for what's right. And you can feel that strength of your warrior in your legs when you work with the warrior postures. So let's do this pose on the other side. You're going to take a generous step back with your left foot. So the distance between your two legs is about the distance, about the length of one of your legs. So we just got a knock on the door here. Maybe that's our lighting or our headset coming, <laughs> arriving. Okay, so turn your hips to face front. And then you're going to sink down through your front right foot, front right knee, and come upright for warrior one on the other side. your legs so that was that was our lighting arriving so next week when we record we'll have hopefully better lighting for you and thank you to all your all of you for your kind donations because it's allowing us to continually improve the quality of namaste yoga for you 
to be able to do these classes in your own home for free every week. So thank you so much for all of you who have donated. It's very much appreciated. Okay, let's do warrior two. Take a generous step back with your right foot and turn your hips so that they face the long edge of your mat. So this is actually a conversation that you have to have with your hips and your knee. If your hips turning this way really brings your knee in, then you always choose your knee being right over your ankle versus being turned in, okay? Always choose knee first, always look after your knee. And then you'll bend your front left knee and bring your arms up parallel to the ground. Turn your head to look over top of your left fingertips. In Warrior Two, we take all our wisdom and learning and experience from the past. We stand present in our present moment and we create a vision for our future. And so again, it makes me think of Andrew Harvey's work, The Hope. And he says that with your spiritual practice is not enough, that we need to go out into the world. So gone are the days. When I first started taking yoga, we used to kind of withdraw from the world. It was, if, we, if you could find a cave in India to practice in, then that was a good deal. And now in the culture of yoga, we're really wanting to go out into the world and make a difference in the world. So we become at peace with ourselves and then we go out and we make peace in the world. So release this side. Let's just turn both toes to face your hips and then switch your feet to the other short edge of the mat. Sink down through this side. So I love what Andrew Harvey says about what breaks your heart the most. And then that's where your energy should go to improving things. So he says to wake up at three in the morning when everything's quiet and dark and ask yourself that question. What makes me cry? What breaks my heart? And that's your answer to where you're where you're to put your warrior energy. Okay, and then release and walk your feet in. Then once we've stood and faced our problems, we've gathered our wisdom from the, from the past, stood in the present moment, created a vision for the future, then it's time to shoot those peaceful arrows. arrows. So we come to warrior three. Stand in Tadasana and take your arms straight overhead and then you'll tip yourself forward. Okay, I'm not quite sure how much space I have around me here. And this is a great core strengthening exercise too. So think about drawing up through your pelvic floor, get that sense of inner poise here. And then slowly up, shake out your legs. And let's do this on the other side. So standing up nice and tall, roll your shoulders back and down. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, you'll hinge from your hips forward, coming into warrior two, warrior three, sorry, Virabhadrasana three on the other side. And then release that from your body. Whew, so you'll probably notice that we create a lot of heat in our bodies when we are doing these postures. Five minutes left? Wow, really? <laughs> you're getting lucky. <laughs> I had lots more planned for you, so you're getting off a little easy on account of time here. Okay, inhale, reach your arms overhead 
and then you're going to exhale hinge from your hips comes forward bend your knees take your hands underneath your shoulders walk your feet back to plank pose okay let me show you two things that happen in plank pose one is that the low back totally gets dumped which is going to hurt your back and the other one is that you cop out of your abs all together by lifting your butt in the air so bring yourself right over your shoulders tuck your tail under and your body wants to be flat as a board broad across your back and your chest and then you're going to breathe in and breathe out Good, and then lower your knees and sit back on your heel stretch. Then let me give you an option for those of you who find that um, your wrists get sore in these poses. A great way to get around that is just to spread your fingers more widely so that you're reaching out into the webs of your hands. But I know some people have things like carpal tunnel syndrome or they've broken their wrist and, and so then it's not a good idea to be on your wrist if it's acute at all. So if that's the case, then here's what you're going to do. You're going to come down on your belly on your forearms and roll your shoulders back and down so your chest is broad and wide. Tuck your tail under and pull your hip bones back. So you come into a modified plank. So you can stay here, this is a great exercise, or you can tuck your toes under and lift your knees. And you're gonna breathe here. And then lower your knees. Draw your knees up underneath you and sit back on your heels. If this bothers your knees at all, then back with your knees to your chest. Okay, roll up through your spine and then rest back on your back for Shavasana. I'm going to finish today by reconnecting with that quote about poise and power. The real power lies in inmost silence. If you want to know how you can remain peaceful while doing something powerful, then I wish to say that you have to understand the meaning of the word powerful. Power means the poise of one's inner being, one's soul. If you have a free access to your inner being, to your soul, then automatically your outer action will be peaceful. You do not have to raise your hands and show off your outer capacity. Here there is no dramatic performance. If you are acquainted with what you inwardly have and inwardly are, if you have free access to your inner being, then automatically you taste the bliss of silence. And if you taste the bliss of silence in your outer action, you will all the time be peaceful. Powerful action is the result of inner poise. This powerful action is not a dynamic force or something that is seen in movement itself. No, it is only in silent equanimity, in the very heart of silence, that you get this power. If you feel this power and enter into it, then everything is peaceful around you. Poise is an unseen power, and this unseen power is always ready to come to the aid of outer action. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 66 of Namaste Yoga on 
the solar plexus chakra and the spiritual warrior archetype. And again, if any of you want to be part of this pilot pro project to do private yoga sessions with me and you have a webcam and a Skype, free Skype video account and high speed internet access, then email me at info at melissawest.com and I'll choose three people to give private sessions with to see if this will work. So thank you so much. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.